Friedrich Ludwig Gottlob Frege was a German philosopher, logician, and mathematician. He is considered to be one of the founders of modern logic and made major contributions to the foundations of mathematics. He is generally considered to be the father of analytic philosophy, for his writings on the philosophy of language and mathematics. While he was mainly ignored by the intellectual world when he published his writings, Giuseppe Pino and Bertrand Russell introduced his work to later generations of logicians and philosophers. Life Childhood Frege was born in 1848 in Wismar, in the state of Mecklenburg-Schwerin. His father Karl Alexander Frege was the co-founder and headmaster of a girls' high school until his death. After Karl's death, the school was led by Frege's mother August Wilhelmina Sophie Frege. In childhood, Frege encountered philosophies that would guide his future scientific career. For example, his father wrote a textbook on the German language for children aged 9 to 13, entitled Hulfsburch zum Unterrichter in der Deutschen Sprache für Kinder von 9 bis 13 Jahren the first section of which dealt with the structure and logic of language. Frege studied at a gymnasium in Wismar and graduated in 1869. His teacher, Gustav Adolf Leo Sascha, who was a poet, played the most important role in determining Frege's future scientific career, encouraging him to continue his studies at the University of Jena. Studies at University Jena and Göttingen Frege matriculated at the University of Jena in the spring of 1869 as a citizen of the North German Confederation. In the four semesters of his studies he attended approximately 20 courses of lectures, most of them on mathematics and physics. His most important teacher was Ernst Karl Abbe. Abbe gave lectures on theory of gravity, galvanism and electrodynamics, complex analysis theory of functions of a complex variable, applications of physics, selective divisions of mechanics, and mechanics of solids. Abbe was more than a teacher to Frege. He was a trusted friend, and, as director of the optical manufacturer Carl's Isag, he was in a position to advance Frege's career. After Frege's graduation, they came into closer correspondence. Starting in 1871, Frege continued his studies in Göttingen, the leading university in mathematics in German-speaking territories where he attended the lectures of Rudolf Friedrich Alfred Klesch, Ernst Christian Julius Schering, Wilhelm Eduard Weber, Eduard Rieke, and Hermann Lotzer. Many of the philosophical doctrines of the mature Frege have parallels in Lotzer. It has been the subject of scholarly debate whether or not there was a direct influence on Frege's views arising from his attending Lotzer's lectures. In 1873, Frege attained his doctorate under Ernst Christian Julius Schering, with a dissertation under the title of Über eine geometrische Darstellung der Imaginerangebilde in der Eben, in which he aimed to solve such fundamental problems in geometry as the mathematical interpretation of projective geometries infinitely distant points. Frege married Marguerite Katharina Sophia Anneliese Berg on 14 March 1887. Work as a logician, though his education and early work were mathematical, especially geometrical, Frege's thought soon turned to logic. His Begriffsschrift, Einer der Arithmetischen Naturgebildete Formel Sprache des Rien und Denkens, Concept Script, a formal language for pure thought modeled on that of arithmetic, Hallier, S. Verlag von Louis Nebert, 1879 marked a turning point in the history of logic. The Begriffsschrift broke new ground, including a rigorous treatment of the ideas of functions and variables. Frege wanted to show that mathematics grows out of logic, but in so doing, he devised techniques that took him far beyond the Aristotelian syllogistic and Stoic propositional logic that had come down to him in the logical tradition. In effect, Frege invented axiomatic predicate logic, in large part thanks to his invention of quantified variables which eventually became ubiquitous in mathematics and logic, and which solved the problem of multiple generality. 
Previous logic had dealt with the logical constants and or, if, then, not, and some and all, but iterations of these operations, especially, some, and, all, were little understood. Even the distinction between a sentence like, every boy loves some girl, and, some girl is loved by every boy, could be represented only very, artificially. Whereas Frege's formalism had no difficulty expressing the different readings of every boy loves some girl who loves some boy who loves some girl, and similar sentences. In complete parallel with his treatment of, say, every boy is foolish, a frequently noted example is that Aristotle's logic is unable to represent mathematical statements like Euclid's theorem, a fundamental statement of number theory that there are an infinite number of prime numbers. Frege's conceptual notation, however, can represent such inferences. The analysis of logical concepts and the machinery of formalization that is essential to Principia Mathematica to Russell's theory of descriptions, to Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorems, and to Alfred Tarshi's theory of truth, is ultimately due to Frege. One of Frege's stated purposes was to isolate genuinely logical principles of inference, so that in the proper representation of mathematical proof, one would at no point appeal to intuition. If there was an intuitive element, it was to be isolated and represented separately as an axiom. From there on, the proof was to be purely logical and without gaps. Having exhibited this possibility, Frege's larger purpose was to defend the view that arithmetic is a branch of logic, a view known as logicism. Unlike geometry, arithmetic was to be shown to have no basis in intuition, and no need for non-logical axioms. Already in the 1879 Begriffsschrift important preliminary theorems, for example a generalized form of law of trichotomy were derived within what Frege understood to be pure logic. This idea was formulated in non-symbolic terms in his Die Grundlagen der Arithmetik, The Foundations of Arithmetic, 1884. Later, in his Grundgesetze der Arithmetik, Basic Laws of Arithmetic, Frege attempted to derive by use of his symbolism, all of the laws of arithmetic from axioms he asserted as logical. Most of these axioms were carried over from his Begriffsschrift, though not without some significant changes. The one truly new principle was one he called the basic law v. The value range of the function f is the same as the value range of the function g if and only if x f equals g. The crucial case of the law may be formulated in modern notation as follows. Let x fx denote the extension of the predicate fx, i.e., the set of all f's, and similarly for gx. Then basic law V says that the predicates fx and gx have the same extension if fx, fx gx. The set of f's is the same as the set of g's just in case every f is a g and every g is an f. In a famous episode, Bertrand Russell wrote to Frege, just his volume. Two of the Grundgesetze was about to go to press in 1903, showing that Russell's paradox could be derived from Frege's basic law v. It is easy to define the relation of membership of a set or extension in Frege's system. Russell then drew attention to the set of things x that are such that x is not a member of x. The system of the Grundgesetze entails that the set thus characterized both as and is not a member of itself, and is thus inconsistent. Frege wrote her hasty, last-minute appendix to volume 2, deriving the contradiction and proposing to eliminate it by modifying basic law v. Frege opened the appendix with the exceptionally honest comment. Hardly anything more unfortunate can befall a scientific writer than to have one of the foundations of his edifice shaken after the work is finished. This was the position I was placed in by a letter of Mr. Bertrand Russell. Just when the printing of this volume was nearing its completion, Frege's proposed remedy was subsequently shown to imply that there is but one object in the universe of discourse and hence is worthless, but recent work has shown that much of the program of the Grundgesetze might be salvaged in other ways. Basic law v can be weakened in other ways. 
The best-known way is due to philosopher and mathematical logician George Boulos, who was an expert on the work of Frege. R, R is 1 to 1 and X, Y. Now we can V to V asterisk. A concept, F and a concept, G have the same extension, if and only if neither F nor G is small or X. V asterisk is consistent if second order arithmetic is, and suffices to prove the axioms of second order arithmetic. Basic law V can simply be replaced with Hume's principle, which says that the number of F's is the same as the number of G's if and only if the S can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the G's. This principle, too, is consistent if second-order arithmetic is, and suffices to prove the axioms of second-order arithmetic. This result is termed Frege's theorem because it was noticed that in developing arithmetic, Frege's use of basic law V is restricted to a proof of Hume's principle. It is from this, in turn, that arithmetical principles are derived. On Hume's principle and Frege's theorem, see Frege's logic, theorem, and foundations for arithmetic. Frege's logic, now known as second-order logic, can be weakened to so-called predicative second-order logic. Predicative second-order logic plus basic law V is provably consistent by finitistic or constructive methods, but it can interpret only very weak fragments of arithmetic. Frege's work in logic had little international attention until 1903 when Russell wrote an appendix to the principles of mathematics stating his differences with Frege. The diagrammatic notation that Frege used had no antecedents. Moreover, until Russell and Whitehead's Principia Mathematica appeared in 1910-13, the dominant approach to mathematical logic was still that of George Ball and his intellectual descendants, especially Ernst Schroeder. Frege's logical ideas nevertheless spread through the writings of his student Rudolf Carnap and other admirers, particularly Bertrand Russell and Ludwig Wittgenstein. Philosopher Frege is one of the founders of analytic philosophy, mainly because of his contributions to the philosophy of language, including the function argument analysis of the proposition, distinction between concept and object, principle of compositionality, context principle, distinction between the sense and reference of names and other expressions, sometimes said to involve a mediated reference theory. As a philosopher of mathematics, Frege attacked the psychologistic appeal to mental explanations of the content of judgment of the meaning of sentences. His original purpose was very far from answering general questions about meaning. Instead, he devised his logic to explore the foundations of arithmetic, undertaking to answer questions such as, what is a number, or what objects do number words refer to, but in pursuing these matters. He eventually found himself analyzing and explaining what meaning is, and thus came to several conclusions that proved highly consequential for the subsequent course of analytic philosophy and the philosophy of language. It should be kept in mind that Frege was employed as a mathematician, not a philosopher, and he published his philosophical papers in scholarly journals that often were hard to access outside of the German-speaking world. He never published a philosophical monograph other than the foundations of arithmetic, much of which was mathematical in content, and the first collections of his writings appeared only after World War II. A volume of English translations of Frege's philosophical essays first appeared in 1952, edited by students of Wittgenstein, Peter Geech and Max Black, with the bibliographic assistance of Wittgenstein. Despite the generous praise of Russell and Wittgenstein, Frege was little known as a philosopher during his lifetime. His ideas spread chiefly through those he influenced, such as Russell, Wittgenstein, and Carnap, and through work on logic and semantics by Polish logicians, sense and reference. The distinction between Shin and Bedutung was an innovation of Frege in his 1892 paper, Über Shin und Bedutung. According to Frege, sense and reference are two different aspects of the significance of an expression. Frege applied Bedutung in the first instance to proper names, where it means the bearer of the name, the object in question. 
but then also two other expressions, including complete sentences, which bedutin the two truth values, the true and the false, by contrast. The sense or shin associated with a complete sentence is the thought it expresses. The sense of an expression is said to be the mode of presentation of the item referred to. The distinction can be illustrated thus. In their ordinary uses, the name Charles Philip Arthur George Mountbatten Windsor, which for logical purposes is an unanalyzable whole, and the functional expression, the Prince of Wales, which contains the significant parts, the Prince of She, and Wales, have the same reference, namely, the person, best known as Prince Charles. But the sense of the word Wales is a part of the sense of the latter expression, but no part of the sense of the full name of Prince Charles. These distinctions were disputed by Bertrand Russell, especially in his paper on denoting the controversy has continued into the present, fueled especially by Sol Kripke's famous lectures, Naming and Necessity, 1924 Diary. Fredge's published philosophical writings were of a very technical nature and divorced from practical issues, so much so that Frege Scaladermat expresses his shock to discover, while reading Fredge's diary, that his hero was an anti-Semite. After World War I his political opinion became more radical. In the last year of his life, at the age of 76, his diary contains extreme right-wing political opinions, opposing the parliamentary system, Democrats, Liberals, Catholics, the French and Jews, who he thought ought to be deprived of political rights and, preferably, expelled from Germany. Frege confided that he had once thought of himself as a liberal and was an admirer of Bismarck, but then sympathized with General Ludendorff and Adolf Hitler. Some interpretations have been written about that time. The diary contains a critique of universal suffrage and socialism. Frege had friendly relations with Jews in real life. Among his students was Gershom Scholem who much valued his teacher, and he encouraged Ludwig Wittgenstein to leave for England. The 1924 diary was published posthumously in 1944. Frege apparently never spoke in public about his political viewpoints. Personality Frege was described by his students as a highly introverted person, seldom entering into dialogue, mostly facing the blackboard while lecturing though being witty and sometimes bitterly sarcastic. Legacy The Frege programming language is named after him. Important dates Born 8 November 1848 in Wismar, Mecklenburg-Schwerin, 1869, attends the University of Jena, 1871, attends the University of Göttingen, 1873, Ph.D., Doctor in Mathematics, attained at Göttingen, 1874, Habilitation at Jena, Private Teacher, 1879, Ozerordent like a Professor at Jena. 1896, Ordent Liker like Honorare Professor at Jena, 1917 or 1918, retires, died 26 July 1925 in Bad Kleinen.